six is called Cover Your Mouth. And the purpose of this activity is that we're going to do two experiments. Um, we're going to show the ease at which droplets spread out from a cough or a sneeze and ways to reduce the spread. So we need a few different things. The first is there's an overhead to photocopy called the Cover Your Mouth that has balloon number one and balloon number two along the side and number of pieces of confetti in hula hoops. We have three hula hoops. And if you don't have hula hoops available to you, another option is to mark off three circles that intersect at the ends with masking tape. And you need a couple of round balloons and some confetti. And the easiest place to find confetti when you are teaching students in grade four to six is to go to the handy school hole punch and collect it from there. So to get confetti into a balloon, you just need to make sure your balloon is, doesn't have a hole in it, which this one doesn't. And we want to take about 50 to 100 pieces. So, oops. so we're just dropping them in the end of the balloon before it's been blown up and letting them fall in. Okay, and once we feel that we have enough in there, you blow up the balloon and tie it. Okay, so we're also going to need something to pop the balloon with, and I have a tack sitting over there. Some people prefer a pen and a piece of paper to be able to block the second balloon with. So this is a great activity to get a student to come up and assist you with. Um, in my travels, I have encountered a few people who have a real fear of balloons being popped. So it might be good just to warn your class or participants that there will be the popping of two balloons. And if this is going to become an issue that maybe they want to sit outside the door for a few minutes while this activity is being done. Okay, so I'm going to get, um, get your balloon popper, whoever they are, to stand um, usually about six inches back, works well, from the hula hoops. And the hula hoop nearest to the person popping the balloon, we're going to identify as hula hoop number one. Hula hoop number two is in the middle, and hula hoop number three is at the far side. So you just want to hold your balloon out in front of you and pop it. And we're going to see how many pieces of confetti have fallen into each hula hoop. So today we have got 4, 6, 8, 10, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26. We have 28 pieces of confetti that have fallen into hula hoop number one. So I'm going to write that on my overhead. Uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 15 pieces that have fallen into hula hoop number 2. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 that have fallen into hula hoop number 3. And that is pretty standard because obviously you're going to have more in the hula hoop that's closer to you. Just a couple things to point out. Number one, it is important to stand back a little bit because if you pop the balloon right over top of hula hoop number one, then the results are going to be a little bit skewed. And secondly, depending on what someone is wearing, I had someone who was wearing a really thick sweater and popped the balloon and all the confetti landed on them and as soon as they leaned over to count, it all fell forward. So you kind of want to make sure people aren't wearing anything it's going to adhere to. Okay, so we're just going to sweep up our confetti. Now that we're doing the second part of the experiment, again, we have our handy balloon. We have our tack. We've cleaned the confetti out from inside the hula hoops. And this time when we pop the balloon, we again want to stand back our six inches to a foot. And this time we're going to have someone hold a piece of paper in front of the balloon as it's being popped. Okay, so I'm going to pop it and I'll just get you to hold it kind of right in front here. Thank you. Thank you. So let's see what we have got. So in hula hoop number one, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 15, 18, 20, 20, 20, 24, 26. We have 27 pieces of confetti. 
Hula hoop number two has nothing, and hula hoop number three has nothing. So what we're showing is how when you, if the balloons represented someone coughing or sneezing, and all of the confetti are the germs that are being spread out <coughs> when we cough or sneeze, so they spread out beyond us. The piece of paper is just like if we covered our cough or sneeze with a hand or with a sleeve or with a tissue. So we're showing that the germs aren't going to spread as far, which is exactly what our experiment did, so it worked well. Um, we still have a fair number up close to us, which again, you know, a hand is not going to stop the germs from leaving our mouth, but it is going to prevent them from spreading out further. So if we look at our um, overhead, the numbers show exactly what we should see. Now, if you were doing this experiment in a sci in science class um, rather than in a health class, which it definitely falls into, you could explain the experiment to the students ahead of time and ask them to predict how many pieces of confetti would fall into each hula hoop and do a hypothesis based on that and then see how many of them are accurate. So there are ways that you can adapt some of these activities to classes beyond health class. Mm -hmm.